Boss Man show with a nice guest. We have a new era here in Atlanta, starting with the College Park Skyhawks. We have a new assistant GM, Tori Miller, who is on the Boss Man show. Tori, how's life for you? Hi, Jared. Life's good. Um, excited to be back home in my home state of Atlanta, Georgia, and just ready to get things underway in College Park. Yes, indeed. Well, I want to start you off this tour, up. What inspired you using school down in Miami to want to get into basketball operations, get into the sports administration world? Like, what kind of stuck with you made you say, this is a career path I want to take? Okay. Um, well, growing up, I've always played basketball growing up ever since I was about six or seven, eight years old. Um, and just, I can tell you, I tell people this all the time, you know, on a good day, I'm 5'2". Um, but uh, on game days, I'm about 5'6 with my heels on, but Outside of that, I didn't think that, you know, there was much future for me, uh, you know, on the court, uh, whether it's professionally or collegially after high school. But I always wanted to, be, you know, stay, in, stay around the game and kind of stay involved with the game. And basketball out seemed like a natural transition for myself. Yes, indeed, because, I, I mean, like you say, everybody can't play. Everybody can't be <laughs> on the court. So being behind the scenes with being in one of the suits, man, you still have power. Because look, look, look at Bart Tatum. <laughs> right, he's Alan Silver's number two man. So especially even right. African American in that role as well. So I feel like and being a woman, so you have a lot of things for obviously persons too that you want to hit this goal and make this happen. So I feel like, hey, if you can't be on the court, be in the suits too. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. And also, I want to ask you, Tori, like as you as you came up through college and was going through your your process and your BA there down there in Miami. Who are some people who really played a key role for you and inspiring you to move in the role you are and move with the Hawks being assistant GM now and kind of got you into, into the Hawks business all, all together? Sure. Um, so while I was in Miami, um, there's an agent down there by the name of Merle Scott. Um, Merle kind of was the first person who gave me my first opportunity working in sports. Um, I interned for Merle Lennon Sports Agency um, all throughout my uh, – while I was in college University of Miami – so he's a big influence on my career because, you know, without him allowing me to, you know, be an intern at the sports agency, who knows if I'd be even working in sports um, today. Um, so he was a big influence on myself. And then, obviously, Malik Rose, um, you know, Malik was very influential in kind of the driving force to bringing me here in Atlanta, to Atlanta, um, when he was the GM of, of the Bayhawks uh, two years ago. So he's a big influencer on my career as well. And then, um, obviously, Derek Pierce was our current GM here with the Skyhawks. Uh, just being around Derek on a day to day basis, just picking his brain. He has a very um, vast scouting background. So being able to just learn from him and kind of, he gives me the film to kind of be creative in different situations. So he's been very huge in my career as well. Yes, indeed. And Malik Rose is a very good, good guy. I like talking to him at the games as well. And Derek Pierce is also a very smart man as well. And so, let me ask you, Tori, in, in your new roles as the assistant GM for the Skyhawks, how's that mm-hmm. different different from the role you had as manager of basketball operations? Okay, well, as manager of ops, you know, I pretty much handle a great deal of the logistical and day-to-day tasks. Um, you know, I'll still touch those same items and those day-to-day matters, but – um, as assistant GM, I'll have a shift and a greater focus on the player matters, uh, from scouting to player relations and uh, personnel items. So just a slight shift in responsibilities, more focus on the personnel side of things. It's been a personnel trail. When you're trying to scout a player, what mm-hmm. are the key characteristics you're looking for in a guy, what you want to bring to the scout house, a guy you want to have on your roster? So what do you kind of look for when you're out there trying to see fine players, whether it be summer league, in college hey. ball, or wherever you go look, looking, for, looking for players? Because players are everywhere in these days. So right. what, what are you looking for when you find one playing a player to your organization? Well, number one, JR, is can he play? Uh, you know, Amen. Does, <laughs> you know, does he, um, you know, does he possess an NBA skill, you know? Um, by that, I mean, is he an elite athlete? Can he shoot it at a high clip? You know, is he an elite defender? Is he versatile? Is he a high-level playmaker, rebounder? You know, qualities like that that can, you know, we can go to our coach and say, hey, this is a guy that we can, you know, deserves a shot and give our coach, you know, someone that he can actually put in a game. You know, and off, off the court, it's all about, you know, looking for high-character guys, guys that are good teammates, just a guy that we feel so comfortable with um, assimilating into an NBA locker room. Yeah, they're right, and I, and also you want to find the right fit too, because right. every player might not be the right fit for your organization or, or your culture. Because right. you might have a guy that can shoot light, lights out or defend right. like crazy, a three and D guy, but if his attitude's not right, he might not fit the culture. He doesn't do the small things to help you win. It's not not exactly. on, that, on that stat sheet. You might not want the guy on your team. That's Absolutely. a very key point factor Absolutely. as well. <laughs> 
Now, also, Troy, I wanted to get you on this as well because uh, you know what those uh, guys you signed on, on the with Charlie Brown also and Brandon Goodwin. Uh, what do those guys bring to the roster as two-way players, being able to play on the Hawks as well as the Skyhawks kind of go back and forth there, provide depth for them as well, and also develop down there with you guys. So what did they bring? What did you, Derek, you and Dan, see about those guys to bring them to the Skyhawks when you're in season in College Park out there at the Gateway Center? Right. Um, so I think with Charlie Brown, um, obviously, you know, if you were watching Summer League uh, out in Vegas, he showed flashes of promise. Um, with his length, his versatility, and his ability to make shots. And, again, he's another high-character um, young man who, you know, his coaches raved about him. And so I think he's a guy who can come in and kind of compete, push us, push our young guys here in Atlanta, and then also um, continue to develop while he's with us down in College Park. And then um, the, the good one signing isn't official, so I, we can't, um, I can't comment on that one. Okay, got you, got you. A little ahead of the game there, a little ahead of the game there, but we assume he'll be there so- soon. <laughs> yes, indeed. But I want to ask you this, Tori, if you could share with listeners, how is the G-League team kind of composed for, for us, how to you build a roster? Is it mostly guys that are you, you guys signed directly, or is it a guys the Hawks maybe say hey we want them in our system so how do y'all go about building this roster for the Julie team because we know how to do it on on the, on, on the big team of course but how do y'all right. do it down there to, to build the roster out um so well the G League is a very unique league um there are multiple ways in which we can construct our roster um starting in the summer um obviously the two-way contracts are our big focal point in um in roster construction then from the uh, two ways you have the G League draft is another way where you can get players um, you also have a mechanism with the Exhibit 10 contract where those are guys who come to training camp with us um, in Atlanta. And then if they don't make our final roster here in Atlanta, we can allocate them as an affiliate player, player for our G League team in College Park. And then you also have a way, um, a local trial route in which all teams each year, um, if ours are coming up in the fall, um, is where players can come out and they can try out. Like guys just really just roll out of bed and just come down to our open tryouts and try to make our team. So, it's a lot of different avenues, um, you know, that we can construct our roster. And obviously, you also have your return rights guys who are there with you that you can also bring back to your team. Yeah, also, I was going to ask you, like, the returning rights guys, so how many of those guys can you keep? Because from what I'm hearing, it's pretty much a new roster pretty much every year, with exception of, of a few guys. <laughs> yeah, so no two years in the G League, your team is, is rarely the same. Um, but returning rights guys, you have their rights for up to two seasons. So each year, um, that they touch the G League, um, they kind of reset their two years. So we can keep their rights for up to two years. So say if a guy played with us last season, he's free to go overseas um, next year and play. And then if he wants to come back to the G League, then we would re- um, retain his returning rights. So it, it's, a, it's a way for guys, you know, to be flexible if they want to go test it and make some money over in Europe and come back and tr- give it a run, uh, the NBA run again, they can have that option. And, Troy, like, just based on watching – the summer league, the mm-hmm. quality of the G League is getting better each year. Like I remember when it first started, when they had those basic <laughs> uniforms and those basic teams, but it's, it's becoming like, like a, a big brand as well. The NBA re, kind of redeveloped, giving the name the G right. League as well. Teams have their own uh, affiliates like the Hawks do now with the, with the Skyhawks. So I thought the quality of the players is getting better, and also it really serves as a testing ground or a, a ground to breed young talent for the big team and kind of right. put the same program that the big team is using down on the guys who are young and up and coming as well. well absolutely. Um, you know, like you said, there's nothing basic about the G League anymore. I mean, the quality of play in the league is being proven. Um, you know, on any given night, you have assignments, guys down who, you know, are, are lottery picks and they're trying to find their way and they're trying to find their niche and their role and to, to get minutes on an NBA roster. And then also with the implementation of the two-way contracts, you're seeing an influx in ta- talent across across the league. And then not only those guys, but the, the G League players, they're pretty darn good in their own right. So it's a very talented league to me. Um, in my opinion, it's the second-best league in the world. Get there, right? Let's talk about the, the Hawks and the Scott Hawks, kind of their okay. yeah, marriage here. Like, Ben, let, let's just look at this of it. You're right down the road from – Emory, so pretty much you can send a guy down from a Hawks practice down to a game at College Park and vice versa. We'll get a young guy some, because I got a lot, we got a lot of young guys now, so you can send the guys to play a game with you guys, go to the big team, so how, with you guys being so close and not being eerie, I think it'd be much easier to kind of send guys back back and forth now, being in College Park and get guys some run down there with you guys, do some experiences to help the big team down the road. Right, so um, you know, 
Right. Well, first off, Jr. We don't like to say down. We like to say, you know, the guy assigned to us. Um, you know, so assigned. Okay. I, I, we'll I use the lingo assigned. Gotcha. Throw it out there. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I just want to throw that out there. So, no, I think when the guys are assigned, um, you know, the finding the vision for the Scout House is pretty simple. You know, we want to mirror exactly what the Atlanta Hawks um, are doing. Uh, Travis and Coach Pierce, they they have a clear vision you know, what they want to build, a group of high character guys that are committed to development. I think we're going, you know, we're going to work those same principles um, in College Park. And so if unless we want to create an environment, there's a clean transition for when our assignment guys are assigned to us and also vice versa when, you know, we may have an injury in Atlanta and one of our guys in College Park, you know, has the opportunity to, to suit up for the Atlanta Hawks. So I think we just want to make it as seamless as a transition as possible and, like you said, um, just be a mirror of the Atlanta Hawks. And how exciting is College Park to have this new arena, the Gateway Center out there, right there at the airport there, to have fans coming out there. Seeing tickets up, it's so low as $10. You can't mm-hmm. beat that, fans. Can't Stop beat seeing it. tickets. You know, that's that's, 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 that's less than a beer right there. That's like <laughs> a, buying you a show that calls or something. You can go do that any time. $10 to see, a, see some good basketball. So right. how excited are the fans? You guys hear from the fans how excited they are about this new arena and the team coming to College Park with the backing of two chains. You right. know, so, yeah, we've yeah, killed them. For sure. <laughs> you know, the city, of, the city of College Park is excited right now. And like you mentioned, with, with two chains on board and ownership, you know, he's shown a huge level of commitment. You know, it's going to be a fun environment and a great opportunity to bring high-level basketball to the south side. Um, you know, I just think that the fans, you know, social media presence is growing each and every day. Uh, fans are reaching out, asking where the tryouts are. You know, everyone wants to be involved. So we're excited um, to get down in College Park and, and just get in the community. Uh, you know, we toured the Gateway Center a few weeks ago, and the, the arena is coming along great. Uh, it'll seat around 3,500, and it'll have, like, an open design. So it's no true – Truly, there's no bad seat in the house. Um, you know, it's going to be a very, very, very beautiful facility. I think will be one of the better facilities in the G League. So we're excited. So am I. I cannot wait to go out there and watch you guys play. And fans, if you get some tickets, tickets today, twenty five dollars deposit, you get you a two chains t shirt. <laughs> two <Yeah>. chains. <laughs> <laughs> get you a shirt with your two chains on there. Support you your college spark Skyhawks. <laughs> am I lying, Tori? Am I You're lying to the truth? You're not lying. You're not lying. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Well, Tori, I want to say congratulations on, on, on your new gig. Uh, congrats on that. I look forward to just meeting you in person. Look forward to covering Thank the you. team and being a big supporter of you guys. I'll, I'm so excited because the Hawks are my team. Going up in Nashville, there okay. was no there was no, no Grizzlies when I was growing up. Okay. That was the Atlanta Hawks. So I, I came to the Hawks game with my father and mother. Okay. I was in the, I was back in the winds the Omni when Matumbo and those boys was up on Chicago when the Bulls okay. came, shut them down real fast. But I was excited. You're, you're from back Hawks fan then, okay. Yeah, so it's a blessing to be able to cover the team I grew up cheering for as a child in Nashville, Tennessee. So it, it's great. So, yes, it is. Well, Troy, congrats again on the new position. We look forward to talking to you down, down the road, and thank you for your time today. Okay, thank you, Jr. And thank you to everyone that supports College Park and Atlanta Hawks. Yes, indeed. For the Tory Miller here on the Boss Man Show. For all your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at blueberryproductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B L U B E R R Y, Prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Hey there, your yard took a real beating this summer. Luckily, Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard has your back. Just feed your grass with Scott's again this fall when the air is cool and the soil is warm. It's the perfect time to give your lawn a boost. If you do, Winter Guard will give your yard the nourishment it needs to help weak, thin grass recover and support root growth, giving you a greener, more resilient lawn both now and next spring. Guaranteed. Grab a bag of Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard today. You'll be back to barbecuing in no time. This is a Scott's Yard. Hey parents, we all try to be extra careful with our children in the car, but then we get an important call or text. Remember, our children are watching. Make every drive a good example. Be in the zone. Turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash BITZ to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. 
Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academics and athleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach TWheel24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Boss Man Radio Show, covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Hip hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENC, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, IllStreetRex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today. True Speech and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it, get it. A gorgeous tan from Suntan City gives you an inner glow that relights the fire when you run into your first crush. Vicky, who is that? An old boyfriend. Lucky you just tanned at Suntan City. Lucky he's single. We're doing lunch tomorrow. Won't be single for long then. During Tour of the City, try all five tans, including spray tan, for just $4.99. Restrictions may apply. Click to buy now. When you're a teen, you finally get to make some of your own decisions. Who are you going to hang out with? What do you want to be? Are you going to glance at that text while driving? Remember, a split second is all it takes for something tragic to happen. Be in the zone. Turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash BITZ to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. Is maybe the night that my dreams might let me know All the stars are closer, all the stars are closer Tell me what you gonna do to me Confrontation ain't nothing new to me You could bring a bullet, bring a sword, bring a morgue But you can't bring the truth to me Alexa, play Kendrick Lamar and SZA Okay Maybe the night that my dreams might let me know All the stars are closer With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. Yeah, yeah, it's your man, JC, the host with the most, baby. And it goes down each and every Saturday night right here in the city of Memphis. That's right, y'all. It goes down at Clicks Sports Bar Memphis, baby. 3705 Malco Way, Memphis, Tennessee, 38125. Come out and join us, the Three Kings, each and every Saturday night for the livest karaoke in the city. Everybody gets in free till 10 p.m., only five dollars after great food we got drink specials we got all kind of games man we got the pool tables popping whatever you want we got you man come on out have a good time with us each and every saturday night that's clicks sports bar memphis all right folks here on gerald the boss man show we're talking to the new head football coach at howard the Bison up in the DMV in Washington, D.C. Coach Ryan Prince. Coach Prince, I know you're getting ready for camp here real soon with the guys. You got the first game against Maryland on, the, on August 31st at College Park, man. So I know you're excited, Coach. How are things going up there for you in the DMV, man? Things are going good. It's uh, As you can imagine, it's been busy. Uh, we, when we are, Since we've arrived in December, we've spent a lot of time recruiting, uh, but we've also spent a lot, of time, a lot of time really trying to get to know uh, our campus and, and our constituents here and, and really figure out what makes Howard University tick. And, and I'm really excited about the, the season we have coming up. 
And coach, how has recruiting gone for you guys enough? Because Howard's a, a, a known brand nationally. And I don't care where you're in the country. They know about the Howard brand, coach. And you know you're in the DMV, the DC area, a great city and town. A lot of experience there. A lot of environment around that university and, the, and, and, and just the whole city of DC as well. A lot of his history. So how's recruiting, recruiting been? Getting guys to buy in and want to come and be a part of what you're building there at, at Howard. Knowing that you're a former guy that's been in the NFL, that can also help them and show them the way how they how is it an NFL player as well. It's, it's been phenomenal. Uh, I, I have to tell you that I recruited this area for many years, probably 15 years, at a number of different schools that I coached at. Uh, and, and so for many years, I was really, you know, talking to these young people here about, you know, going away to college. Uh, I, I can tell you now, Washington, D.C. has been a great place to recruit, too. Uh, the town has changed so much. Billions of dollars have been invested in the city. Uh, so that's that's a real positive. That's a real amazing thing. It's a vibrant town. We all know it's the most powerful city in the world, uh, but it's also a very youthful city. You know, there's seven universities here in the area, so there's a real energetic vibe, real positive vibe uh, in, in this area. But the other b- big part of this, and I don't know that every young person that we talk to knows this, but Howard's a tier one university. It's one of the top universities in the world. And it's a special place because of its, its history and its impact on our culture. But this is an unbelievable education. I think we're the 89th ranked school in the country at this point. Uh, and they're talking about the next year going even higher. But when you add the number six media market in the country and all those things that I talk about, it's a great place for young people to, to be able to demonstrate what they can do and, and show their brand. After some years in the NFL, coach, or the Detroit Lions there, or also you went to Michigan as, a, as an analyst, what about the opportunity of how it really resonated with you to say, hey, this is where I want to be. This is a good place to go coach and get my foot back in as a head coach. So what, what kind of triggered, triggered you to go to Howard after you, your time in the NFL and being in Michigan as, as, as an analyst last year? I, I kind of I called, I called it some unfinished business, JR. It was um, – Howard was the place that I committed to uh, back when I was a, a youngster. Willie Jeffries was the coach here. Uh, we, we started following Coach Jeffries, one of the first African American, the first African American coach at a PWI, primarily White Institute, out at Wichita State, where I grew up in Kansas. And so we we watched him, and, and we were in awe of him, and, and and watching him on the sideline. He was the the first one, right? And so there were folks in our hometown who had gone to Howard, and they said, "Hey, you know, told my mom you ought to have that boy consider." Howard and we did there was a coaching change and it didn't quite work out and, and so I, I ended up going to school elsewhere but that was my first beginning uh, relationship with Howard and, and being enamored with it and understanding what it really is I later had a chance to go coach for Willie Jeffries at South Carolina State and really learn uh, what has made him uh, really distinctive in this business but for me coming to Howard plain and simple is because I believe we can win I really do. I believe we can win, and we and I think we can, and we can sustain winning here at Howard, and and that's the the number one reason that I came here. You got there, right, coach? And also, I think another big thing about when you've been to Howard, like I'm an HBCU grad myself, coach. I went to Tennessee State University, so I, TSU is part of my blood too. So, been an HBCU school, you have a, a kind of an extra layer to help our young black men become fathers, husbands, businessmen, great career men in the world. So having that responsibility to help mold about 100 young men to great husbands, fathers, good citizens of, of this country, how, how, how does that really resonate with you as well, knowing that that, that extra responsibility you have to help bring our young black men up to, in their formative years to become men? There, there are certain things that a youth coach, high school coach, college coach, and pro coach can address with a young man and he has an, an automatic audience with that young man's brain, right? Uh, mm-hmm. he, he will listen. Now, sometimes the young people want to know that you can that, that you can help them become a better player before they want to listen to you about becoming a better man. But that's the platform that we have. And, and I really think that the biggest part of this uh, in, in where we are today is that I think so many of our families and so many of our young people have an awareness that maybe over a period of time, uh, previous generations maybe haven't had, that young people and their families are seeking these kinds of opportunities at these kinds of schools. They are looking for HBCUs. They're looking for these rich soils to, to, to raise these young people in and to have them grow. 
And, and I think that with everything that's going on in our country and in the world, uh, I, I think there's never been a better time to be at HBCU and to grow and develop as a young person. And we're seeing that in how young people are being receptive in recruiting, uh, how it's going for us, how we're being received in the homes of, of some, some players who've had some very significant opportunities in other leagues uh, and, and much you know, bigger football names. Uh, that, that and they're they're choosing Howard, so we're we're really excited about that, and we just think it's the it's the right place to be at the right time. And coach, speaking of the young men you want to bring into your program, um, what type of young men are you look, look, looking to bring into your program? I know Howard has a lot of academic requirements as well, and what kind of young men you want to bring into your, your this environment, your team, your culture, your program, and to help you build sure. this foundation for a long time to come. Sure. One of the things that people have asked me frequently at the MEAC meetings last week, they were saying, hey, do you feel any limitations with, with the academic success of Howard? And I said, absolutely not. One of the most difficult uh, scholarships to earn in America is to Stanford. Okay, Coach Shaw has done a phenomenal job at Stanford, and, and, and young people are really excited when they get an opportunity to get an offer there. That's how we believe Howard should be. And we've talked to our young guys that we think that the, the CEO of the top companies in this country, he ought to come from Howard. The guy who's writing, uh, you know, to, uh, standing up, you know, presenting truth to power in, in journalism and in articles should be from Howard. We think the guys who should, you know, represent us in our government, in the Senate, in the House, in the White House, those young men should be from Howard. And we think the people that should, you know, should be holding them to, to the, the standards that, that the community um, expects them to uphold should be from Howard. We think we ought to have a team of young men who should literally be the country's leaders uh, because that's the kind of exposure you get here and that's the kind of opportunities you have. And we also think that that should have, a, you know, a young person should be a phenomenal football player. And that's that model of how they're doing it at Stanford, which Coach Shaw has done and some other tremendous places that, that, that we've coached and been exposed to has really convinced us that right now, Howard and schools like it, this is the very best place to be in the time we are because I think families have never been more aware of how important an education is. There's so much discussion on student loans and the tremendous debt that some families in, incur in order to send their young person to um, a college like Howard. And the fact that we can be there and offering a, a scholarship to accomplish that and all their other their dreams we think this is the, the right place at the right time, one of the best places to be in America. You got that right, Coach. What you said really just hit, hit, hits home with me because for me, Coach, outside of my mother, out of my both my grandparents, out on both sides of the family, I'm the only grandchild that has a college degree and a master's degree of all the grandkids from both my grandparents on both sides of the family. So for me, being the only one out of all 14 grandkids that go to college and get a degree, and get a, 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 also a postgraduate degree to, from an HBCU school. I mean, it's just, it's so important to have people in my life help groom me to do what I did. And, uh, I know for you, being a coach, it's really important to help groom the same kind of young men to, to go on to maybe to be the first graduate from their families as well and to go and get master's degrees as well and be like a CEO of businessmen, maybe a football player if they're so lucky. But uh, but my, most of us will, will have another different kind of career path after our plan is over. You know, here's one of the biggest things that I tell people. You know, my, my, neither one of my parents went to college, right? anyone in our family. They were just rural Missourians. And it was really impactful for me to be able to, to come to go to college and, and legitimately have a chance to earn my degree. So when you look at a place like Howard where we have a great law school, great medical school, school of journalism, communication, school of engineering, school of business, School of Divinity, anything that a young man would want to, to come and learn and internalize and prepare himself for future greatness and future service, we have here. And so we, we don't find any conflict in being able to have your football abilities open doors for you that, uh, you're, you know, that your mind has been contemplating. And, and that's the kind of young people we're looking for, guys who want to be distinctive, who want to be good at more than one thing, who are legitimately interested in, in, uh, in, in trying to be excellent, not only in fall, but in their academic uh, endeavors and, and be and really ambitious in their career endeavors. And we think that that's why Howard is such a special place right now, and we think that that's why we will, will be successful in the future. 
and Coach Lancer's schedule. Outside the MEAC, I see you play at Dunlap because of the first season. But you understand how with Jim Trestles at Austin Harvard, who kind of like this, who's very high ranking. When you play your older MEAC, I would have to have to know. At non conference schedule, that's good. It's very good, man. It's a very, very high schedule you have there. So, how did that schedule uh, come about? This is perhaps the most ambitious schedule in history. And to be able to play a big tournament right here, baby, in our neighborhood, uh, to be able to play the fourth win uh, when it comes to uh, championships with the FCS and Town State. Uh, to be able to go play Harvard, which is the all-time eighth winningest program in college football, those are significant. But the but the the, the conference skill and our long historic rival Hampton in Chicago, Soldier Field, that's going to be exciting. The people in Chicago are already uh, they're tweeting about it, they're talking about it on social media, they're excited. Our fans are excited about travel. But the reality is, there's some programs in our conference that are hot right now on the field, and we've got to be able to improve and compete and, and show that you know that we belong on this on this MEAC block and. And we have a lot of ahead of us that accomplish that. And I'm sure you'll talk to, you know, want to talk about some of the specifics. But uh, we have plenty for how we to do that. But we know that we've got to make some uh, significant improvements to certain areas. I was going to ask you, Coach, you kind, of, you kind of read my mind there. Who will be some of the key guys here in Washington, in Washington, defense this year to help you achieve what you want to achieve in our conference? And maybe at hope you know, first at uh, NCAA out there. Well, it, it don't say I mean, that we're not in the okay? So we were, we were 94th in the country last year on defense. And that was one of the things that I looked long and hard at. And, and, and the time that I spent at Michigan, uh, Don Brown, who's a defensive coordinator there, has had a tradition of having one of the best defenses in the country year in and year out, no matter where he's been. And so we brought staff members from Michigan, who were young guys who worked under that system here because we really want to play great defense. And I think that our defensive front specifically uh, will be a big key for us. We, we think we have a very exciting secondary uh, Jalen Smith, John Smith the sixth, uh, Rodney Denard, Ty Freeland, all are all conference caliber defensive backs. Uh, Aaron Walker, who was our MVP of the spring, playing our Viper position. Uh, but we really are kind of looking to see who's going to emerge in that defensive front. Uh, Zaman Robinson was somebody who had five and a half sacks last year. We're looking for him to really step up. And Marcellus Allison, who was an all-conference linebacker a year ago, we're really looking for him to step his game up, and that'll be critical. On the offensive side, everyone knows that we have five skilled players that are highly regarded. Our quarterback from Atlanta, rookie of the year in 2017, player, offensive player of the year in 2018, was just picked preseason by the coaches as, uh, you know, uh, as the person who's most likely to be offensive player of the year this year. Kalen Newton, leadership, leadership, leadership. He's been terrific. We've got two wide receivers and Anthony and Ezard, all conference, either led the conference in receiving or, in Ezard's case, led the nation in yards per catch. Phenomenal prospects, really good young men. Running back, Diedrich Parsons. He was, again, here's a young man who was newcomer of the year to the conference, preseason, first team all MEAC. And one of the biggest I think surprises for us in the spring was a young man named Malik Hyatt, the tight end. He's a sophomore, and and he was our MVP in the spring. He's really emerged, and I think that'll be a really uh, that'll be a big help for us. And the thing that I like about every one of those young men that I just mentioned, every one of them over a 3.0, and in fact, three of the five over a 3.4, 3.5 GPA. These are young people who are serious about their education, are serious about what they're doing, and and we think that's pretty exciting. Clearly on offense, we're going to have to improve in the offensive line. Too many sacks a year ago on the quarterback, and that's where a lot of our effort is going towards. But uh, but we're, we're real excited about our team. It's going to be a young team. Um, you know, this, there's a lot of young talent in the team, and we believe that we've added some young talent to it in, the, in this past recruiting class. And so we're, we're excited about our opportunity to go out and play this fall. And I was going to say, Coach, you know, with your expertise with the offensive line coach and your NFL all these years, you know, you can definitely help fix up that line for those guys with your wealth of experience you have doing the line there. Well, no, that's, you know, obviously that, that helps. Um, it, it also is a good reminder because, you know, being in the NFL, working with offensive line, when you come to the, to the collegiate level, uh, you can tell those young people, hey, look, these guys who are playing in pro football started out just like you, okay? They started out as young men who were good athletes who were learning the skills and the trade of becoming an uh, offensive lineman. And, and we believe that we're attracting the right young men because of that. And we think our, the young guys that we have here will grow and improve, but we got to go prove it. Uh, so our offensive skill guys are, are more proven commodities uh, within the league and are, are more household names uh, than our offensive line at this point. 
And yeah, Coach, I also wanted to ask you this, Coach, before I got you on the phone here, is uh, what has been your typical day like since you've been a new head coach at Howard? Because I'm pretty sure you a lot of meetings, a lot of interviews like Doug doing with me, a lot of booster meetings, meeting with the administration, meeting with different people, staff, donors. So how has that been, getting to know, know the people around Howard? How, 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 how are your days typically structured now right, since you've been kind of in this little down period here before it all gets going here real soon if we're getting ready for this first game against Maryland here on, on August 31st at College Park there? Well, most of my days are structured the same. I only live about four or five blocks from campus here. I'm I, I live the NFL commuting life, 45 minutes to an hour uh, to get to work. I did that. I just I was determined when I came to Howard, I was going to live right here in D.C. in our neighborhood, and I do, and that's been a tremendous help. So when I get in the morning, obviously, first thing we do is we, we meet as a staff and, and we address any old business from the day before. But we're really working on recruiting as the number one thing. And then we'll obviously break up offense and defense and, and we'll attack whatever side of the ball and have whatever issues there are for that particular day and talk about schemes and concepts. Uh, but then we usually end the day with, with uh, discussing our own players, their academic performance, how they're improving, and then always special teams. Uh, how are we going to try to improve in, in, the, in the kicking game? Uh, because we believe that's the way that you really improve a team the quickest uh, is in that area. And so that's what we're – Spend the most of our days look very similar, and they look like that, uh, with the exception of those days that we're actually on the road recruiting or, or on the field with our players. That's that's the, basically what the format is. And coach, last one I got for you, coach. Uh, there's a, a professor, an African American named Dr. Gregory Carr. She had to come speak to mm. you, speak, speak to your team. He's a great man. He went to TSU, graduated in 87, the year I was born. He was just hilarious to a degree while I tell him that. But, I mean, you graduated the year I was born. But he's a great man. He can give your team a lot of insight about life and it's in general. Just take a class from him. He's a very good man. I mean, I got the Gregory Carr as a guy that should have come talk to your team. I mean, he definitely enjoy his own staff. As yeah, well. no, our, player, our players have been very involved with him already and have learned about him and, and his ability to uh, – to, uh, you know, the impact that he's had on our culture. And so we're, we, you know, very excited about that. One of, you know, our young people came to me the other day and he uh, he came in and said, hey, man, you're, I need to tell you about this guy. <laughs> he started telling me about Dr. Carr and I'm like, thanks. I, 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 yeah. But it was it was really exciting, the, the, the excitement on the young man's face and, and how refreshing it was for someone to be uh, familiar with one of our very own and be so excited about him. Uh, I think that's one of the things that makes Howard Howard a uh, significant place in, in our culture and in this country. Well, Coach Prince, it's been great to have you on the show. I've, I've, I've watched you over the years when you, when you various stops, and I'm glad that, you know, after Coach Caldwell don't say it most, he let go in Detroit, he let me in Michigan. Now you're here at Howard, man. So I'm definitely happy for you. Definitely be talking to you down the road and wishing you all the luck this season, Coach. And best of luck to you guys down, down going forward, man. Well, it, it, wouldn't it be great if we were able to reconnect with you in December down in Atlanta? So uh, that's what our goals are. And so with, uh, you'll get the very first interview when we get to town, okay? Thanks a lot, Coach. I appreciate that. I look forward to it. I hope we see you at the Celebration Bowl for sure. Yes, sir. Coach, have a great one. Talk to you real soon now. Take care of yourself. All right, now. The folks is Ryan Prince of the Howard Bison on the Boss Man Show. For all your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu-ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at BlueberryProductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, Prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Hey there, your yard took a real beating this summer. Luckily, Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard has your back. Just feed your grass with Scott's again this fall when the air is cool and the soil is warm. It's the perfect time to give your lawn a boost. If you do, Winter Guard will give your yard the nourishment it needs to help weak, thin grass recover and support root growth, giving you a greener, more resilient lawn both now and next spring. Guaranteed. Grab a bag of Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard today. You'll be back to barbecuing in no time. This is a Scott's Yard. Hey parents, we all try to be extra careful with our children in the car, but then we get an important call or text. Remember, our children are watching. Make every drive a good example. Be in the zone. 
turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash BITZ to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Boss Man Radio Show covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Hip hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENC, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, IllStreetRex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody. Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today. True Speech and 313 Fresh Family Grind ENT. Believe in it. Get it. A gorgeous tan from Suntan City gives you an inner glow that relights the fire when you run into your first crush. Vicky, who is that? An old boyfriend. Lucky you just tanned at Suntan City. Lucky he's single. We're doing lunch tomorrow. Won't be single for long then. During Tour of the City, try all five tans, including spray tan, for just $4.99. Restrictions may apply. Click to buy now. When you're a teen, you finally get to make some of your own decisions. Who are you going to hang out with? What do you want to be? Are you going to glance at that text while driving? Remember, a split second is all it takes for something tragic to happen. Be in the zone. Turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash B-I-T-Z to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. It's maybe the night that my dreams might let me know All the stars are closer, all the stars are closer Tell me what you gonna do to me Confrontation ain't nothing new to me You could bring a bullet, bring a sword, bring a morgue, but you can't bring the truth to me. Alexa, play Kendrick Lamar and SZA. Okay. With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. Yeah, yeah, it's your man, JC, the host with the most, baby, and it goes down each and every Saturday night right here in the city of Memphis. That's right, y'all. It goes down at Clicks. Sports Bar Memphis, baby. 3705 Malco Way, Memphis, Tennessee, 38125. Come out and join us, the Three Kings, each and every Saturday night for the livest karaoke in the city. Everybody gets in free till 10 p.m., only $5 after. Great food. We got drink specials. We got all kind of games, man. We got the pool tables popping. Whatever you want, we got you, man. Come on out. Have a good time with us each and every Saturday night. That's Clicks Sports Bar, Memphis. All right, folks, back here on the Gerald the Boss Man Show. We're going to talk about the Memphis Grizzlies with Omari Sankofa of the Athletic in Memphis. Omari, hey, you told me it's been hiding in, in, the, in the 901. Now it's calming down for you a little bit, man. Are you happy about that? Can hey, go right around 240 with your windows down now. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. I've been just so humid <laughs> up here, man. Uh, you know, it's been raining a bit, and, you know, things are definitely feeling a little bit better out here. Yes, indeed. Well, Mario, how would you grade the Grizz offseason so far, man? I, I mean, you, you, you're on 
the last day of the season there at the closing of the like availability, you get JB out there talking, you know, and Chris Wallace and I, I hear a, a Woj bomb on my phone that they're both been re, 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 reassigned, JB fired, and I'm thinking, what the heck's going on in Memphis? You know, let's see, here we go again. But they seem to recover real nicely, man, and kind of get draft picks, make good draft, get John Moran's well, make some nice trades there. So well, how how would you grade the offseason so far for the grades based on how it started at the last day of the season? Yeah, no. I mean, I would I would give it an A minus. Yeah, I think uh, obviously getting John Moran the second overall pick, uh, you know, you needed some luck getting that they had the ace best odds, but John Morant and they were to finally move on from the Mike Conley era, which you know kind of fizzled out over the last two seasons, missing the playoffs and him being hurt and whatnot. Uh, I mean, they just made a lot of smart moves. Uh, you know, the return they got from Mark Gasol back in February was great, and uh, you know they were able to get additional. Uh, players in, in return for the package they got from Mark. They they added Anthony Melvin from Phoenix. They got Grayson Allen from Utah. They added several draft picks. They you know they got a couple from Phoenix. They got a first rounder from Utah. Uh, you know one of which became Brandon Clark, who was a Summer League MVP, a, a player that I think fits perfectly next to Jan Jackson Jr. And there's just a lot of smart, forward-thinking trades that really put this franchise on the course to be competitive again in a few years. I think some people probably could have argued that they should have done this sooner, but ultimately it took a front office change, as you mentioned, for that to happen. And it definitely seems like Zach Kleiman and the rest of the front office have the, the right thing in mind as far as getting this franchise back on track. Yeah, Omari, like you like you mentioned, the, the draft piece of Memphis was pretty much dry. The coverage has been dry because Chris Wallace has mortgaged the future by giving up picks to, to get veteran aging players, second-round picks for different guys, man. So having the restock that draft covered helps you have assets to make the right deal to bring in a veteran and or get who you need to get off a contract or something like that. So – I think what climbing did, we're stuck in that draft cupboard, it's going to help in multiple ways. It definitely will. They, so, uh, Chris Wallace, he had given a two second round picks back in January for Justin Holiday, who was ultimately a, a half season rental as a shooter. He's with the uh, Pacers now. And then a couple of years ago, he gave up a first round pick to Boston for Jeff Green, and they still have to convey that pick to Boston either next year or the year after. So they entered the summer with a uh, draft pick deficit, and now they have a draft pick surplus. You know, as I mentioned, they got uh, two from Utah, one of which became Brennan Clark in this past draft, the other which is uh, protected and will likely come in 2022. They got the uh, additional first rounder from uh, Golden State with the other trade that will likely come in 2024. And, uh, you know, they got a couple of seconds from Phoenix, as I mentioned. You know, just, just really smart moves. You, know, you need draft picks to rebuild in today's NBA. They have such a young core of John James still only being 19. So uh, you could potentially add, you know, two more, you know, starters with those first round picks, you know, for the next four seasons. And, uh, you know, all these guys are on the same timeline. Uh, it's really smart planning for them. Now, Amar, do you feel that they'll get a first round pick for, Ig- for Iggy or not? Or will they just have to go and release him on Dwight Howard and just eat, eat the money and let those guys go and sign wherever they want to sign? come September, October. The Iggy situation is tough because at the end of the day, he is 36, and, well, he's 35, he's 36 in January, and he is making $17 million. He's still a good player, he's still a good defender, a good playmaker. Uh, the teams that reportedly are looking to trade for him, uh, the Clippers and Houston, just gave up a lot of draft picks for Paul George and Russell Westbrook, so it's tough to see them giving up an additional draft pick for Igor Tyler, who will be a free agent next summer. And, you know, pretty much if you don't win a championship this year, you give up a draft pick, essentially for no reason, because you may not get him back next summer. Uh, so it's it's really tough for me to see why either of those teams will give up a first round. I don't even know if they have a first round to give up. Uh, you know, Dallas also reportedly is interested in setting for Igor Dalla, and they couldn't give up a first round pick, but they gave up first rounders in pursuit of Kristoff Prisingis. And in my mind, they are still not quite a championship contender. They made the expectations, but they're still not quite there yet. So it's tough for me to see the incentive for them also to give up a first rounder when they've already given up uh, first rounders this past season. More than likely, you know, you're probably looking at a second round pick. You know, maybe if you get a player in return, maybe you can't. But ultimately, they just make a $17 million a year. These are teams that don't have 
a surplus of cap space. So part of me is a little skeptical that uh, there's a deal out there that makes sense for Memphis. Yes, indeed. And also, the Grizzlies are getting free looks at young talent like Josh Jackson and Grayson Allen and those guys because you can't look at their cap there. There are a lot of young guys on the roster who are getting can get a free look that, this year. They can look at it and say, hey, maybe they, this guy fits. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe you can flip him for a draft pick at, at the deadline for somebody who's desperate for a body. So I feel like the, the, the guy getting those free looks to these young talent is going to help Memphis as well, who is obviously rebuilding the roster. I agree. They have a lot of young guys who played before a position. You have Dylan Brooks, you have Kyle Anderson, uh, Brennan Clark. Uh, you know, and then you also have Jake Crowder, who's in the mix. You have, uh, you know, Jared Johnson, who's going to be a fourth for the most part this season, Bruno Caboclo. All those guys should get more minutes than Andre Iguodala, who really, you know, at his, his age and his experience with over playing five straight NBA finals, is overqualified, you know, to be for, on, on this team. I see fans talk about him playing the veteran mentorship role, obviously being able to help out on the court. He can be a mentor in theory, but at the end of the day, you know, this is a guy who is in a part of, of his career and, you know, presumably wants to be in a winning situation. Uh, does he want to, uh, you know, play for a team where down his body, uh, you know, on a grizzly team that's not going to contend next season? He has to keep all these things in mind, and at the end of the day, uh, it just doesn't make sense for either side for this partnership to last longer than it needs to. So there's a lot to factor in, but yeah, I think I think most people should be able to agree that there's really no reason for it to sit up for the Grizzlies next season. And I saw you put a post about who you think the Grizzlies are uh, play next year, the 200 and, and four, um, 440 minutes they'll play. So I want you to kind of share what do you think the rotation will be next year for, for the Grizzlies based on your article there. Definitely. So they uh, have a pretty straightforward point guard situation with John Moran obviously being a rookie point guard. You want to get him as many minutes as possible. I believe I have him playing 29. Uh, you know, in actuality, give or take, you know, you may play two or three minutes more than that. But uh, you look at a lot of the high, the high drafted rookie point guards, some of the last few seasons, uh, a lot of them play around 30, so I thought that was a fair guess for him. And then a few weeks ago, they uh, signed Tyus Jones and restricted free agency, who was one of the better backup point guards in the NBA last season. I'm not sure if John Moran and Tyus Jones will spend much time next to each other since they're both point guards who, you know, are 6'2", 6'3". Uh, they're better as point guards than shooting guards. So uh, Tyus Jones playing, you know, about 19, 18 minutes, uh, you know, just basically playing the rest of the point guard minutes that John Morant won't play. And uh, you get 48 minutes of good point guard play there. But they're extremely light at shooting guys. You know, you have Dylan Briggs, who has uh, played more small forward than shooting guard, but he's 6'6", so he can play shooting guard. You know, that's probably your starting shooting guard next season. Uh, you have Grayson Allen, who can play shooting guard, who, you know, obviously was a shooter at Duke. He hasn't shot the ball well in the NBA, but he can shoot the ball. He just has to find his touch. Uh, and then you also have Anthony Dillon, who's more of a combo guy. You know, I think both of those guys can see time at the two. Uh, Jay Crowder, I think. Is your starting small for is pretty straightforward. He's a veteran guy. You know, you can shoot the ball, you can play defense at a high level. Uh, you're you're pretty solid there. Uh, you know, he's playing 26 minutes or so. You know, give or take. Jaron Jackson. Uh, you know, to me, he is a center long term. But with Jonah Fox shooting at the five, who's going to start at the five, uh, Jaron starts at the four. He can you know defend in space. He's a good shooter. Uh, he's perfectly fine as a four. And uh, had him playing 31, 32 minutes. Uh, then you have Valentino at the five, who you know was very good in Memphis last season. Uh, all in all, I mean, it's a pretty solid starting five. You know, the, the bench is where things get a little bit more uncertain. But uh, you know, I think I had uh, Kyle Anderson basically playing a six-man role, uh, playing about 26 minutes a game. He's six nine. He can play both four spots. He's a great passer, uh, pretty good rebounder, good defender. I mean, that's just a really good guy to have in your team. Uh, you know, then running it out. I mean, Bruno Caboclo. Uh, good last year. He's a pretty good rotation guy. Uh, he was a few guys I'm forgetting. I mean, this guy, you know, this team is just, they have so many guys right now. Yeah, uh, they have a, a full roster for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, I could go all the way down the list. But for the most part, that's the starting five. It's a good mix of youth and experience. And, uh, you know, I don't know if they'll be very good next season, but they should at least be exciting. You get that right. And, yeah, similar league. Uh, how is Coach Jenkins' style for his coaching the team? Is it just something he's running the offense to Coach Bud running it here in Atlanta and Milwaukee, or he has his own little wrinkles going on there? It's similar league out there. 
Absolutely. So he's uh, been an assistant over Mike Budenholzer, uh, I believe, for five or six seasons, dating back to Atlanta. And uh, he has some similar philosophies. He likes, uh, you know, the, the three ball up, uh, a little bit of a quicker place, pace. And he likes his bigs to be able to shoot the, the three. So I think we'll see those snakes next season. So I think it'll put pressure on Jaron Jackson, Bruno Caboclo, uh, you know, pretty much all the bigs, even Jonas Valanciunas, to, you know, uh, really get that three-point shot right and be able to hit it at a pretty high rate. And uh, this may be the fastest Grizzlies <laughs> team we've seen in a while. Uh, they've been, of course, grit and grind, slow it down, rebound, play defense. Uh, never a prolific three-point shooting team, but I think this season we'll see them play faster and get more threes up than possibly any other team we've ever seen uh, in Memphis before. If I want a guy for you, man, what's been the buzz around Memphis with those two young cornerstones, Ja Morant and Jaron Jackson Jr., setting new, setting the Grizzlies up for a great future here with those two cornerstone pieces? Because you got your point guard and your big man. You need those two things. And I think that us here in Atlanta with Trey Young and John Collins, you guys have the same thing with Ja and Triple J there. No, people are extremely excited. Uh, you know, I start covering the, the Grizzlies last year and once that playoff uh once the, the, the playoff momentum wore off around December, uh a lot of people checked out, you know, it's just tough to, you know, support a team that is both old and doesn't have a lot of young guys. But the Grizzlies lose Jan Jackson is their franchise center, uh, you know, or what's power forward depending on where he ends up. And then John Moran, of course, he had an amazing season at Murray State. Uh, you know, he was the consensus number two pick on a lot of mock drafts. Uh, I think he's really endeared himself to the fan base, even though he's only been here for about two months. And people are excited. I think people uh, will always love grit and grind. I think that'll always have a place in, you know, miffing his heart. But at the end of the day, people realize that it was time for a new era and to have two 19-year-olds who are as talented as John and Jan. Uh, you know, like they're in extremely good shape. And I think fans have definitely tuned in. And there's a level of excitement here that hasn't been seen in a few years. Well, I look forward to coming to Memphis and seeing you guys play, man. I, I come over there every now and again uh, when the Hawks are on the road or something like that. So hopefully be some good games to come see the, the Grizzlies show out and show up. Because I do – I remember the old days of coming to Memphis when it was the gritty and grind days, beating the Spurs in the playoffs, the, the growl tiles waving. So I've seen the good of the Memphis Grizzlies. I want to see it again because that environment is one of a kind. Absolutely. I mean, FedEx Forum – used to rock, obviously, when you have Zach Randolph and, and Tony Allen leading the charge, and fans are ready to come back and support the team. And, you know, I think, obviously, the Hawks, as you mentioned, with Trey Young, John Collins versus Josh, and, versus Jaron and uh, John Morant, you know, I think that would be a really fun matchup between two of the other teams in the NBA. Yes, indeed. Well, Mario, you did a great job, my brother. You do go at the Athletic in Memphis, man. Keep up the good work, man. I'll talk to you real soon, brother. Hey, absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. You're welcome, man. It's Omar Sanko for here on the Boss Man Show, covering the Memphis Grizzlies for The Athletic. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach TWheel24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams24. Or you can call me at 404-542-607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Boss Man Radio Show, covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you.